SEMA show is a great place to see new technology, and Dakota Digital is a company that has been uh, adapting new technology for classic cars, and now you're doing it in a way that it looks like it belongs. That, that's exactly right. That's really our bread and butter, making applications that fit a unique dashboard of a classic vehicle, but are compatible with new technologies. Uh, from a direct fit instrument system to an, a 50s vehicle, a 60s vehicle, you know, designed for the unique shape and size of a factory dashboard, but to a universal system for a modified dash, for a muscle car, for something that's going to be very unique, or the application's just a little bit unique, or somebody wants something different than the vehicle next to them. Uh, so blended with backlighting, uh, full LED backlighting, uh, and digital readouts, uh, the, the possibilities are, are pretty wide and has a pretty unique look to it. Let's go back to the basics. Why would I want something like this over the stock gauge? A couple of reasons. Uh, number one, are you, you know, are you doing a modern drivetrain? Do you need compatibility? Can you operate with the original motor transmission if that's what you have? Number two, you have more readouts. Uh, you're going to generally add a tachometer. You're going to add a clock. You're going to add backlighting. So viewability, not only at night but during the day, is, is going to be good. The needles are lit. Uh, we have you know electronic sensors, solid state sensors. So the accuracy, of course, is phenomenal. So really, there are, there are many advantages. But compatibility with a modern drivetrain usually is step number one to get getting somebody to think about it or just looking more modern more than anything else. Now, what if I'm still running a carbureted small block in a you know 67 Camaro and uh, I'm not going with any electronics under the hood? You know, that's the beauty of our system and that's that's really the reason for our control box. We do this because you can use the original wire, you can use an aftermarket wire, you can use an LS9, you can use a, a factory small block. It really doesn't matter. Our sensors are going to fit into them. We have adapters for, for any of the common engines that we see out there now. Uh, so no matter what you're doing, whether you, you start for the first couple of years of life with the original engine, but you have plans for an LS swap somewhere down the road, that's fine. Just move the sensors over and away you go. Scott, I'm amazed at the number of um, specific drop-in replacement gauge panels that you guys make. How many different cars and trucks are you guys covering now? We're, we're, as far as direct fits, we have about 100 different applications. You know, primarily in the GM, primarily in Ford, we're just getting into some Mopars. But beyond that, you know, a full line of universals to cover anything else. But direct fits right around 100. Now I'm seeing this all looks like tri five Chevy stuff. But there's differences. What do we got? There are differences, yeah. Looking at the same application here, however, this is a silver face, this is a black face. We have a carbon fiber face as well. But even though it's the same application, it does all the same things, the difference is, is pretty striking, just in the, the face plate, more or less. Uh, additionally, we're looking at a couple of different backlighting color options. Um, this is a full backlight, or full red backlight, versus a, a full blue backlight. On the 55 car down here, in a second, this one's going to light up white at night with red needles. So you have that red, that contrast of a red needle on a white background, just front of your peripheral vision, a little bit easier to read at night. Now I see these have a digital display in the middle. Uh, what can we show in that window? You can show a lot. You know, the, the standard six readings are the most common, and that's going to be speed, tack, oil pressure, water temp, voltmeter, fuel, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, additionally, there's an odometer, a couple of trip meters, an A and a B, uh, clock, zero to 60 timer, quarter mile time. Beyond that, you can add a lot of functionality onto it. If somebody wants to add boost pressure, if somebody wants to add compass or altimeter, a number of different things can be added into these readings. It can stop at a pretty basic setup, but somebody can keep expanding that should they want to. And you guys sell the control add-on boxes to add those functions to the system? No doubt about it. It's a wide range of those. You know, the, the, the compass, uh, air pressures for air suspension, the list is long. Wow. Uh, now, one challenge that I know sometimes you have is these are electronic stepper motors. Yes. And if you've got an old car that has a mechanical transmission, how do you get the speed signal from the trans to the electronic gauge? Sure, yeah, an electronic sensor or transducer, pulse generator is another name for it. And that's the simplest way to do it. That's a little device that just threads in the tail shaft where the cable was at. As that rotates, it creates a voltage, sends it up to the gauge. So that's one way to do it. Another way is GPS technology, you know, pulling that information from the sky. When we developed the GPS speed sensor, it wasn't about just creating speed. We know there's a lot more information out there that we can get. So we're pulling down the, the, the compass information, of course, the altimeter, the clock, and you know numerous other things that we can we can 
translate to our instrument system just to make the package a bit more expandable. Now what about going the other way? What if I have an electronic drive line, but I want to keep my stock speedometer? That's another unique aspect of this industry now, is, is keeping the original look, keeping the original speedometer, but maybe a newer 4060E transmission, for example. Well, the compatibility of that electronic transmission and a mechanical speedometer, you've got a big missing link there. Mm -hmm. One way we can do that is with a new device, we call our ECD100. It takes that electronic input, it spins a cable on the outlet. Of course, it's fully adjustable. That's tire size, gearing, and things like that. So you can get that dialed in for an atypical application, which is the hot rod world. But it's fully compatible with any of those new transmissions, any, you know, any of the aftermarket, or any of the factory speedometers, rather. Very cool stuff. You guys, are, you seem to be thinking about all the different aspects of this. Um, here's one more for you. Say I've got a modern drive line going into an older car. Uh, Perfect example, we're building a, a 69 Ford F100, but the whole cab and body is going on a 2002 Lightning chassis. Yeah. So we're doing all the Lightning electronics. We're going to use one of your drop-in gauge pods. Yep. Will we be able to connect that pod right to the factory ECM, or do we have to run sensors off the motor? You can do it either way. Uh, we have, you know, all of our gauge kits include sensors that you can put in any motor. But a simpler way, especially for something like this, is an OBD2 bridge that we offer, or it's it's a plug-in to the diagnostic connector. What we're going to extract from that then is the speed signal, the tack signal, the engine temp signal. In many cases, the oil pressure signal as well, and then the check engine data. So all of that's something we can request for the computer if it sends it back. Of course, we're going to display it. So, from an installer standpoint, you're saving a lot of time. You're going to the to the to the connector instead of adding sensors. Very cool. We appreciate you taking the time. Where can people see more of the new stuff? Uh, DakotaDigital.com is our website. That's the best place to find it all. Excellent. Appreciate it, Scott. Thanks.